In this video, we're going to be looking at a real simple and easy way to do asynchronous requests in Python. So I'm going to be using a package called gRequest, which handles a lot of the async for us. But I think it's important to start with this one because it shows us what we can and can't do asynchronously before we move on to perhaps AIO HTTP or request HTML async. So we need to send multiple requests to the server to get the information back that we want. We could be looking at multiple product pages or maybe working on pagination. When we're scraping synchronously, we would loop through perhaps a list of URLs. And as we go through, we're waiting for that data to come back from the server before we carry on with our code. So to do it asynchronously, we can perform all those requests at the same time and we can then wait for the results to come back. And it greatly speeds up our code because instead of going one by one, we can ask for it all at the same time and get the information back. Now, the upside of this is it's going to be much faster. Uh, the downside is that not everything can be run asynchronously, so we can't pass asynchronously, but what we can do is we can get a list of URLs and then we can get the data from those using async and then pass the results that we get back. So as I said, I'm going to be using gRequest for this, which is a nice small library which prepares us and explains the basics. And I'm going to run through a quick example of how to make a load of requests using this uh, and we'll see how it performs against doing it synchronously, i.e. one by one. So I'm gonna jump into the code now, we'll, go, we'll have a look into this and we'll see how fast we can actually make these requests. So here we are, I've got a basic scraper. Um, it's gonna run synchronously. This is just generating our URL list. I just happen to know that there are 50 pages here and we're gonna be doing 50 URLs. We're gonna loop through each one here, create a separate request. And as I said before, it's gonna do one request and then wait and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one and so on and we're just pulling out two bits of arbitrary information just to make it a bit more realistic and we are using time.perfcounter to tell us how long the time takes so we've got a start time and the finish time is the current time minus the start so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this and we'll see the data come by on the screen as it goes through each and every page uh, we'll see that coming through here and we can see it's just looping through you can see it kind of chunking through I'm just gonna let this finish and we should be there. And we can see it took 17.84 uh, seconds. You can see that just down there. So I'll just copy that out and we will close this and I'll just write it underneath and I'll say uh, time taken 17.84 seconds. So what we wanna do now is we wanna convert this to instead of using requests to use G requests and basically take advantage of the async that it allows us to get to. So I've got an empty file here. Now the first part is going to be the same because we are that's what we're interested in. And I'm gonna just remove the requests and I'm gonna call it G requests. If you don't have this package, you can pip install it. I'll leave a link down below to the PyPI so you can check it out as well if you're interested. And the next thing that we want to do is uh, I'm gonna copy part of the past part as well. <clears throat> where I need to modify this a little bit. Let's put this here. And in between these two, I'm gonna write a new function which is basically going to get the data for us. So I'm gonna say, find get data, and we are gonna give this our URLs list. And then we're gonna say that the requests, because the way async works, you need to give it a load of tasks to do, and then it runs them for you. So what we're saying is that these are the requests that we want to make. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of list comprehension. I'm gonna say, g requests uh, get and then link for link in URLs. So that's basically uh, a tiny bit of list comprehension which is basically saying all of these links that we're gonna give you here, these are the pages that you need to go to and it's going to run through that. So those are the tasks that we're creating and then we want to say that our response that we get back is going to equal uh, gRequest.map and we're gonna say the request. So the map basically lets us execute these requests um, and then we can just return the response that we get back. So nice and simple, it's only a few lines of code. Again, what we're saying is that the requests that we wanna make are all of these, the links uh, which are in our URLs list that we're gonna give it. It's gonna create all the tasks for us. We can see there it says concurrently converts a list of requests to responses. So what we're saying is that we're saying, here's our list of URLs that we want to make in our requests map them out and get, and get that data for us and then return them all in our response. So what we need to do with our pass function is we just need to change it slightly and we need to say, I'm gonna just change it to response here so it looks a bit better. And then we wanna say for, we need to get rid of 
our request because we are not doing that every time because we've already got all that information here. So I'm going to say for and we'll just say R in response like this and we'll say our beautiful soup is equal to R dot text that matches up. Why I've done R here is because we've got R here and then the rest can be exactly the same. And again, I'm going to copy this little bit from the bottom as well because that is going to be mostly the same too. So let's just double check that we've got that there and um, we want to call it URLs and then we need to add in our function here. Uh, I made a typo there that should match that obviously there we go and because we are returning our response here we just want to say response is equal to and it was get data of the URLs called it get data matches here and then we want to pass the data with the response that we give it. So that should be it there. So we're basically doing exactly the same thing. We just have one bit more, one more step in here. This step is basically our async part. So we can't do this function here asynchronously because of the nature of the way that it works. It's a blocking function. It's always going to take it all up. We can't get that to run asynchronously, but what we can run is the getting of the data from the, the URL, the request that we're making, is which is what we're doing here. So if I save this and run this now, we'll see much quicker, and it ran the whole thing in 1.91 seconds. So let's put that in there. Time taken, 1.91 seconds. Much, much faster. And that's because this code here is basically dependent on the amount of time it takes to make the request to the server and wait for the response. But using async and in this case G requests, we can make a load of requests concurrently at the same time. And when the response comes back for each one, we can store it in our response return from our function and then we can pass it all at the same time. So if I run it again, it's gonna be hopefully equally as quick Okay, 2.9 seconds that time. Okay, so we must have got lucky the first time with a 1.91. It's probably my network or something like that maybe. But you can see it's coming in at 2 to 3 seconds as opposed to 17 to 18 seconds, which is a much, much quicker thing. So how can we use this in a more of a real scraper that we are wanting to do? Well, what I would suggest is if you're looping through multiple pages, so you're dealing with pagination, you use this to go through all the pages and save the responses. Or if you've got lots of products that you want to go through, you could create a list of all the product links. Uh, you could say get the first page and then go through all of the links asynchronously with G requests and then pass the response and then do the same for the pages on and on and on. So coming up in the next few videos, I'm gonna be looking at more of this sort of thing, but I'm also gonna be using AIOHTTP which is a, um, the main sort of asynchronous request library. There's more to it, um, again, but the, pro the concepts are basically the same. So that's gonna be coming out shortly. And then we're gonna be looking at request HTML as well, because some of that can be run asynchronously. We have the async session. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna have some more web scraping content coming out real soon. We're gonna expand on this. We're gonna be doing more scraping. So stick around for that. And if you like it, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe so you get those notifications too. And thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.